Hi everyone, so this is the final video in describing the basic terms and definitions associated with thermodynamics. So to close this up, I want to talk about something called state versus non-state function. And the easiest way to talk about this is really to kind of go through an example to show you uh, the difference between certain properties uh, that you can measure uh, in thermodynamics. Okay, so I'm going to go through this slide first and then we're going to go back to the slide that I just showed you on the definition itself. So if you look at this, um, let's imagine here that somebody is um, hiking all the way up to the top of the mountain. And in this case, the person um, chooses either, you know, can either choose to go through one path, which is this path right here on the side of the mountain where it goes straight up. And the other path that that person could choose is to go through this more scenic route where you go through this zigzag path all the way to the top of the mountain. Now, if you look at this example right here, uh, you can take a look at two different things here. One is just the altitude, which is basically the difference uh, in height that that person would have when he's at the top of the mountain versus when he's at the bottom of the mountain. Okay. Now, if you look at the altitude of that person when he's at the top of the mountain, his altitude is always going to be 10,000 feet regardless of whether he goes through this path or whether he goes through this path right here, okay? Whether he goes through a direct path or whether he goes through the scenic route, he's going to end up exactly 10,000 feet higher than what he was when he was starting, okay? So in other words, the altitude is not affected by the path that this person takes. Now think about what's affected by the path that this person takes. Now clearly the distance traveled is affected, right, by the path that this person takes. If he takes this direct path, he only needs to travel 5 miles, whereas if he takes this path, then he needs to travel 12 miles, okay? So as you can see in this example, there are certain things, certain properties, like altitude for example, that is not affected by the path that a person takes and there are other properties on the other hand that's affected whose value is affected by the path that a person takes now we can then take this back to thermodynamics it turns out that there are functions in thermodynamics thermodynamic properties whose value doesn't depend on how the system the path that the system takes to get from the initial to the final state and there are also properties of the system whose values will depend on the path that the system takes from the initial to the final state. Okay, so this is where the term state function and non-state function comes in. So state functions are basically functions or properties. We're talking about thermodynamic properties, things like volume, energy, and so on, whose value doesn't really change um, <clears throat> when you know it uh, doesn't really depend I should say not that it doesn't really uh, change when the path is changing so if I take let's say five steps to get from my initial st uh, state to my final state uh, I get a certain value and if I take two steps I get the same value okay so that's what we refer to as a state function that's, so that's similar or analogous to this al uh, altitude uh, property here okay Non-state functions, on the other hand, is the same like the distance traveled in this example right here. Non-state function are thermodynamic functions or thermodynamic properties whose values change depending on the path that the system takes. So if I take five steps, for example, versus taking two steps, the value of that particular thermodynamic property will change. Okay. So what are some examples of state functions? Uh, the ones that you already know of right now is internal energy. So internal energy turns out that it doesn't really need to, you don't really need to know the path of the system to get from the beginning to the end. Uh, you just need to know what is the initial value and what's the final value. If you take the difference between those two values, you get the delta E, the change in the internal energy. Later on, we'll encounter this other function called the enthalpy, which also is a state function. It doesn't depend on the path that the system takes to get from the beginning to the end. However, things like non-state functions are work and heat, and you'll see this in the next example. 
Heat and work both depend on the path. So the value of heat may change depending on which path you take, even though you get from the same initial state to the same final state, the value of heat might change and the value of work might also change. Okay, so that's the uh, idea of state and non-state function. Now, when we're doing calculations, calculating state functions is a lot easier than calculating non-state functions. You can think about it, right? Because if the only thing, let's, let's go back to that altitude example. To calculate the altitude of this person when he's at the top of the mountain, the only thing I need to know is where is he starting from and where is he ending at. I only need to know two numbers. I need to know the number here. I need to know the number here. Okay? And I subtract one number from the other. I get the change in the altitude or the altitude of this person. However, to get the distance traveled, I, you know, it's not enough for me to just know where this person's starting with and where he's ending up in. I need to know exactly which path he takes. So in other words, I need to know every little detail about, oh, which way do you go? Do you go through this one or do you go through that one? And I have to make these measurements throughout to determine how, how much distance this person covers. So clearly, to calculate the value of non-state function, you're going to need a lot more information, whereas to calculate the value of state functions, you're going to need less information. And that's always good because if you need less information, that means you need to do fewer experiments. You don't need to know to do as many measurements. And yet the number that you get is still useful. And that's the power of state functions. That's kind of the idea of state functions that when we can measure something without really knowing the details, that's really useful because it makes our life a lot easier. Now I want to uh, put in the, uh, you know, give you another analogy of uh, state function versus non-state function. Okay, now earlier you remember that in the previous slide, I just mentioned to you that uh, delta E, okay, change in internal energy, is a state function. In other words, the value of delta E doesn't change regardless of the path you take to get from the initial state to the final state. And then I also said that Q and W, on the other hand, are non-state functions. In other words, the value of Q and the value of W will change depending on the path. So let's look at this example now. So this example is an example of a uh, pool table and the uh, billiard balls on top of the pool table. Okay, so we'll just talk a little bit about it, so set up the situation. Okay, so let's say you have the uh, white ball here, which is called a Q ball, okay? So let's say you hit the cue ball with a certain amount of energy, okay? Uh, assume that energy is 5 joules, so you put in 5 joules into the cue ball, so you hit it with the energy equal to 5 joules, and because you hit the cue ball, the cue ball is going to move, right? And the cue ball is going to move from this initial position to this final position, okay? So this is your initial state, this is your final state. And when the cue ball gets to this position, it's going to hit this purple ball, and transfer the energy that the cue ball has to the purple ball, okay? Now, we have now two situations or two different types of uh, tables, the different surfaces on the table. On the top here, you want to imagine this table to be a brand new pool table. There's no scratches, no uh, dirt, no uh, pieces of gum, anything on it. It's clean, it's pristine, it's new. So the cue ball uh, can move and hit that purple ball with very little resistance from the table. The table is smooth. There's nothing blocking the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the travel of the cue ball. The bottom table here, you want to imagine that you're uh, dealing with a table that maybe is 30, 40 years old. Uh, has been in the basement for a long time. There may be some water damage on it. There may be some gum as a result of people playing before over the period of 40 years. There's some dirt on it. So as a result, the table is not as smooth. And as a result, the movement of that same cue ball, if you were to give it five joules of energy, will not be as uh, uh, smooth as the top table because you get all these other stuff that's blocking its, mo uh, its motion, okay? So we then consider how much energy is actually going to be transferred to the purple ball. If you think about it, with the smooth uh, table, 
there is some resistance, there's some friction, okay, uh, uh, when the cue ball moves on top of the table. There's always some amount of friction, okay? So that friction is what we refer to as the energy lost through heat, okay? So that's your cue there. Because you're basically not really doing any work when you're losing energy through uh, friction, right? Uh, you're not moving anything. The table stays exactly the same. So as a result, that's energy lost through heat. And let's say with the um, uh, smooth table, you're losing very little energy through heat because the, 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 the table is pretty smooth, so you're not getting a lot of friction there. So let's say you only lose half a joule uh, from, for heat. So most of the energy that you put in, which is five joules, uh, you subtract half a joule, you le you're left with four and a half joule. All that four and a half joule goes to transfer to the purple ball. So when you hit the purple ball, of course, the purple ball will move. So in other words, the cue ball is doing work on the purple ball, right? And the amount of work that the cue ball is doing on that is four and a half joules, right? Because four and a half joules is transferred. So in the above example here, okay, Q is 0.5 joule, W is 4.5 joule. You add them up together, you get the delta E equals to five joules, which is the amount of energy that you put in originally. Now, let's think about the signs, okay? The sign refers to the sign of the energy for the cue ball. The cue ball is our system in this case. So when the cue ball goes from here to here and then it stops, what has happened to it? It initially has five joules of energy. When it stops, it has zero joules of energy. So the delta E is zero minus five, which is negative five. So the delta E of the cue ball is minus five joules. How is that delta E constructed from? Well, the negative 5 joules comes from negative half a joule due to heat and negative 4.5 joules, which is the amount of energy that the cue ball transfers to the purple ball. Let's look at the bottom example now. With the bottom example, we have the table that's a lot rougher in surface, so there's a lot of friction uh, going that's inhibiting the cue ball from moving smoothly. As a result, the energy loss due to friction might be negative 3 joules, okay? So the heat, the energy loss to heat is a lot higher than in the smooth uh, table, okay? And because you lose energy, 3 joules of energy through heat, you're only left with 2 joules of energy to transfer to the uh, purple ball. As a result, the cue ball is doing less work on the purple ball in the bottom example than it is in the top example. But if you look at the numbers again, the delta E is still 5 joules, right? Because when you start, you have 5 joules of energy, and when you stop, you have 0 joules of energy. So the delta E is still negative 5, except that now the negative 5 is composed of negative 3 joules of Q and negative 2 joules of W, okay? So hopefully this example clarifies that delta E is a state function. The value of delta E in the top example and the bottom example is both negative 5 joules. However, the value of Q and W changes depending on what table you're using. And that, that table is, of course, the path of the, uh, that the ball travels from beginning to end. Okay, so the path affects the value of Q and W, but it doesn't affect the value of delta E.